what I want us to do is actually go back to an idea you've been introduced to before, actually last year. This should not be a new idea. But what we are going to do is we're going to take the conditional part of it and we're going to lay down some more, well, what's the way I would say it? Some more technically accurate foundations, okay? We kind of took on pretty easy, nice, behaved questions when you were in years 9 and 10 to do with conditional probability. Now we're kind of entering the big leagues, okay? So we're going to get some notation, we're going to get some set theory, we're going to get some Venn diagrams, all that kind of thing, okay? Let's start with a situation, shall we? Here's our example. We're rolling a die. So we know that if you have a standard die, our sample space is all of the possible opportunities, all the possible outcomes, which are Okay, that's easy. Let's write it down. We know that when we're setting out sample space, the normal way that we do it is with set notation. We don't use parentheses. We don't use square brackets. What do we use? Curly braces. Very good. We do just call them braces, but the curly ones, then you know what we're talking about, right? So let's all get that down. So by convention, we just use that capital S to indicate all of your sample space, okay? So let's suppose we're playing a game, we're rolling dice, right? And we say, all right, you win, you win, if we have an odd number that's rolled. You win if there's an odd number. So let's call the win W, we'll call that our winning event, right? And the sample space for that, or rather with the event space, because this is the favorable event, right? Odd numbers, so that would be? Good, your brains are warming up. So far, so good, okay? Now, I'm not even gonna bother writing down because it's kind of a truism, right? At this point, probability of winning, one over two. By the way, just as a note, I know you know it's one over two, but I'd actually be fine with you writing it as three out of six. In probability, simplifying fractions, it's kind of overrated. Like, you've been learning to simplify fractions since you're seven, but actually, if we were to say, maybe we will write it, right? In this context, when I write the probability of a win, and I say it's three out of six, this actually, weirdly, gives you more information than one out of two, doesn't it? Like it actually tells you where the things came from. So far, so good. All right, now here comes the condition in conditional probability. The whole idea is that we have a situation where we know a bit more information, we find something out, something's revealed, the situation sort of gives us a bit more data, rather than just, in theory, these are all of the outcomes, right? So we might say the condition one of you peeks at the die after I roll it and decides to reveal to everyone, oh, it's prime. The actual number on the top of the die is prime, okay? So now we know a little more, and this does two things. Our sample space is not gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six anymore, and the ways that you can win are no longer one, three, and five. Let's think about this for a second. If you've got another color, it will help, right? Our new sample space, Let's call it, I'm going to call it S2 for a minute, just so you can see where I came from. The textbook will actually call this like, they'll call this A and they tend to call this B. The reason why I don't like that is because I'm like, wait, what was A again? What was B again? You know that's a win. You know that this came from your original sample space. So far, so good? Okay. So, we just said, we just found out extra information. It's prime. So what's our new, our reduced sample space? Two, three, five, fantastic. Two, three, five. In the same way, just like your sample space reduces, it's often the case that your event space also reduces. The number of ways to win is not as many as it was before. So let's just follow the convention, be really original. Let's call this W2. How many ways can I win now? Just two of them, right? Three and five. Three, comma. Five. So, how do we write this? Maybe some of you have seen this notation before. This is something which we didn't formally do in years 9 and 10, even though you used the words of it. We would say, I'm over here, the probability of, we're still interested in how likely it is that you'll win, but it's not just this particular win, because not all of these options can happen anymore, right? You might still just write W over there, because it's still the same thing. Maybe if it was like rolling a six, you'd still write the probability of rolling a six. But I'm trying to distinguish where we're getting these numbers from. It's not over here anymore, okay? Because mathematicians are super lazy, rather than saying the probability of winning on the condition that, because that's like a super long phrase and mathematicians are lazy, we just put in this thing. 
<laughs> Have you seen this before? This is like this, it's called the pipe in computer technology, but you know, we would use a, a bar like so. Such that, this is actually the abbreviation. If you look this up on the internet, you'll sometimes just see the letters ST, such that, or on the condition that. I'm gonna put all this language here because Mathematics is so spare in its symbols, right? Before you know it, you're swimming in all of this like abstract stuff. And you're like, what does it actually mean? These are the words you should be reading every time you see one of these bar symbols, okay? Such that this is the restricted sample space. So you could say prime, or you could write S2 if you wanted. But this is the probability of winning such that, or on the condition that, you've got this. So like we mentioned before, it's just Favorable events over total sample space. Done. Happy with that? Okay, now this is a nice concrete example, but let's actually try to put this into more generalized language, right? Remember I told you about the, um, the A and the B? So I'm gonna use those now because now I'm forgetting about this particular situation with dice and all that kind of thing. It could be anything. So if we're interested in some particular event A, and we know on the condition that some other event is already known or some other information is already established. So such that on the condition that B, this is the other one, okay? I want you to think for a moment and there's at least two right ways to do this. So if you're like, mm, I'm not sure which way to go about this, there's more than one way, okay? We know it's gonna be a fraction of some kind. I want you to think about how we did this, right? How did we go about Getting these two numbers. Suggestion. The number of events, so this is up the top here, right? That are in the sample space of W. Now, before you write that down, that is actually right, right? We're looking at how many things are in here. That's where we got two from, okay? Another way of saying that is, it's both of these things, the thing you want and the thing that you know, happening together. Have you seen this notation before? Does this ring a bell? Okay, so this is the intersection sign from set theory. This is the thing we want. This is the thing we know has already happened. So just have a look up here, right? Do you see? These are the things we want intersecting with the things that we already know have to occur. So far, so good. So you can actually see if we drew this set and this set, that's where they combine to give you this one, okay? That's the numerator. Help me out with the domain. This actually is easier. I'll give you a clue. It starts with M. Have a look. We wrote down three before. Yeah, what do you think? It's the total. The total's right. Can someone advance on that? Total of what in particular? You gave us a helpful answer before. Let's give someone else a chance. Thank you, though. Come on, guys. I'm gonna. I'm gonna wait for you. You need to use your brains if you want to learn this yourself. Where did we get the three from? It's the, well this is the sample space. This is another sample space. What was particular about this? How did I get it again? Yeah, it's reduced. The condition has applied, right? Now down here, this is the condition. B is the condition, right? So it's the number of things in this condition space, right? Does this make sense? This is how we've reduced the sample space, okay? Now, I said there was uh, more than one way to write this. This is just fine if you can count every single possible thing. Um, we, choose, we chose this example of a die because you can literally enumerate them, right? There you are. But there's lots of situations where you can't just go and count all of the things. All you know is the chances of each of the things happening. This is fine. It's the same idea, but instead of counting up, we're gonna deal with probabilities, right? It's the probability of both of these things happening at the same time divided by the probability of, this is the reduced sample space, so it's still B. It's all still the same pieces. Now, you can see, by the way, um, in each of these cases, if you know what the number is, like it'd be six in this case, right? Three out of six, two out of six, the sixes just cancel, yeah? Because you always have the same denominator up here and the same denominator down here, which sends you back to where we came from. But it's just important to know in lots of situations, like the one I'm about to give you, um, you will not know how many things there are. You just know the chances of them. Okay, so far so good? 